Um, some please move to reconvene to open meeting. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Castillo. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Reidinger. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed or abstain? Um, would someone please certify the closed meeting? And my computer is frozen. Madam Chair, pursuant to the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, I move that the board. Oh, the one on the wrong one, I think. Has to move that. There it is. Uh, Madam Chair, whereas the Falchester City School Board has convened a closed meeting on this day pursuant to an affirmative roll call vote and in accordance with provisions of Virginia Freedom Nation Act, and whereas Section 2.2-3711B of the Co Code of Virginia requires a certification of, of requires a certification by the school board that such closed meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law. Now therefore, that therefore be it resolved that the Falls Church City School Board hereby certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge, one, only public business matters lawfully exempt from open meetings requirement by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting to which the certification applies, and two, only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or, or considered. Thank you, Mr. Webb. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Castillo. Uh, yes, Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Castillo? Aye. Ms. Gill? Aye. Ms. Linton? Aye. Mr. Reitinger? Yes. And Mr. Webb? Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so now we've gone to the consent agenda. Um, I would seek um, unanimous consent to approve the consent agenda as presented. See no objections. Thank you. Um, also, like to congratulate um, Lisa High, who will be leaving us, but is going on to a great new position, and we are going to be so sorry to lose you. Um, it's been lovely working with you for the past four years. Um, but we are we can't say where she's going but we're very very excited for you and um, I know you're going to be a superstar in your new district so thanks Lisa when is your last day officially uh, November 6th, November 6th. Okay. I guess maybe before that My computer's still frozen. So um, we were at business, uh, our business item is 5.01, approval of the superintendent's contract. Um, we um, are dealing with a technical issue with VRS, the Virginia Retirement System, um, and uh, <clears throat> how to structure the contract. Um, so we are going to not be approving and signing the contract tonight while we continue to work through this issue um, and better understand um, how the Virginia retirement system works. Um, so we, uh, this is, uh, I just want to make clear, this isn't a, um, this has no, this is no reflection on Dr. Noonan or his um, time here or his service. Um, this is a technical issue. It comes down to a paragraph that we just need more understanding of before we can approve it for the good of the system. Um, but we do hope to vote on it on October 29th, uh, which is a Tuesday night at seven o'clock in a special meeting. Um, so we will be handling it then. All right, next, moving on to the work session, um, section 6.01, our school calendar discussion. Dr. Noonan. Thank you, Chair Gill. Good evening, everybody. Um, this evening, um, what I'd like to do, uh, or what we'd like to do, is sort of follow up on the conversation uh, that we started at the last work session with respect to um, the school calendar for the 2020-2021 school year. Um, and so if I, if I may, I just want to sort of set the stage a little bit for the information that we'd like to share this evening um, by first sort of narrowing the scope of the conversation. Um, as I understand, sort of our task um, from the board is to really look at um, whether or not we should, um, and this has been the context of the conversation since we began, start, labor, start before Labor Day or start after Labor Day. And that's sort of a binary decision whether whether or not we would start before or after and just as a reminder to the community um, our, our plan through community engagement and our ad hoc committee is to have multiple options that are out there pre pre labor day and post labor day for um, the community and our staff to take a look at and give us some feedback on but before they can give us feedback and before you all can make some determinations you need some information 
And so tonight really is um, a follow-on from our last work session, and I sort of see it in multiple parts. Um, the first section of the presentation this evening um, is really a, a bit redundant. I'm going to go over some information that was shared last time, just I think because it's important to kind of hear it again to make sure that contextually you understand kind of where we're coming from. The second part of the conversation is really around what are the drivers um, of the decision about how a calendar is made. Um, and so engaging in uh, a conversation perhaps around the drivers. The, s the third thing I'd like to talk about are questions that I've received to date. So you may recall the last time we were together I asked for questions, received a few. Um, I've put them up on the screen and we can kind of talk through those. Some of them will be answered in the course of the presentation, um, but not all of them. Um, the fourth is feedback uh, from all of you um, regarding other drivers that we should consider as part of the conversation as we uh, engage with the ad hoc committee that will be developing the options for the school's uh, calendar and also um, any feedback that you have uh, regarding um, questions that, you, that may come up that may help us in our, our forthcoming work sessions. And then lastly, I want to go through the calendar of events, just again for the community to make sure that they know when, where, and how they can engage in this conversation um, around the school calendar. So um, with that sort of as a, as a backdrop, um, I want to start um, I want to start with just this slide because this is the opening slide. Um, but I think it's important to note uh, for consistency purposes and communication purposes, um, we have three different audiences that we're going to be talking to the community to the uh, to we have three different audiences we're going to be speaking to regarding the school calendar. There's of course the school board and the broader community that are listening at home tonight. Um, we have an ad hoc committee meeting, which is the committee of people that are going to come together and develop the options. And the third is the broader community at our community outreach meetings that we're planning to host, and our first one is Thursday evening. Um, so this presentation that we're going to share with you tonight is sort of a multi-purpose presentation. We'd like to be able to share this presentation at the ad hoc committee and also share it at um, the community meeting so that everybody's getting the same message. Um, so what you'll see here tonight, if you come to the ad hoc committee meeting on Thursday, you'll hear pretty much the same thing. Um, so if you, and we will also tag this work session to the website, so if someone can't make it to the ad hoc committee meeting and wants to get information, they can certainly look at these, uh, at this video as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a quick question. How are we getting input from the students in this, and where do they fit in the constituencies? Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, we, we anticipate that the student voice in some ways will come through through the family discussions and the surveys that we're going to receive from the families. This will be the first time that the community has had an opportunity to provide input, as far as I know, have had input on the school calendar beyond just working with their school board members. So the fact that we're sending the survey out to all families, my hope is that some of it will come through that way. Um, and, you know, uh, it's a really good, a really good point and, and perhaps there are some uh, ways that we can engage some of our students in each of our schools around some of these questions as well um, to see what their thoughts are. And so we'll work with our SGAs perhaps in the next couple of weeks and see what their thoughts are with respect to drivers to consider. So thanks for bringing that up. All right, so um, a, a little bit of a review uh, from the last time, um, but more than anything, this is kind of the outline that I just described, kind of what goes into the calendar, what values does it reflect, what are the contract lengths for our teachers, and how does that relate to, uh, to the work uh, and the time, how have decisions traditionally been made. Um, again, we have information in here about the Virginia legislation, the calendar options, the current state of the Commonwealth, and then um, engagement plan. So this is a, a little bit like a Rubik's Cube, kind of putting a, a calendar together. That may be too much visual stimulation, <laughs> but um, anyway, I, I did want to let you all know that sort of as we begin thinking about what goes into the calendar, um, we do, uh, by code, um, uh, provide 180 instructional days. I wonder if we can stop that. Is there any way to stop that, John? I don't know. I was going to be sorely disappointed if it didn't solve it. Uh, it, it does eventually. I know, I know. So, uh, but there are 180 instructional days, and that is, um, that's an important marker for us because it's the starting point for any calendar that we put together is that uh, in Virginia, all of our students have to receive 180 days of instruction. Um, so we have typically started after Labor Day, uh, and sort of the working theory or the working philosophy of the school board and the City of Falls Church has been 
We like to end by June 15th whenever possible. This year, just for a historical perspective, we are ending after June 15th. But the reason that we're ending after June 15th was because if we went a few more days, we could have a two-week winter break. And that became an important driver in the conversation. Um, our teachers are on 200-day contracts. Um, and then we have other lengths of contracts for every, uh, from everybody else in the system. But they are a big driver considering they're per they are performing those 180 days of instruction uh, for our students. We work diligently um, to try as best we can within the calendar to look at natural breaks that come and balance quarters. So since we have 180 days, we try to get quarters to be as close to 45 days each as possible. It's very helpful for our teachers and our instructional faculty um, as they're assigning grades to students to be able to have the right amount of instruction across the entire year or a balanced amount. Maybe it's not the right amount, but a balanced amount as close as possible. So um, this year we have some um, quarters that are 43 days. We have some quarters that are 47 days, but they're all within that sort of margin of error of two or three. Um, we also look very closely at the testing windows. Um, we offer an, an uh, a, 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 I was going to say an extraordinary, I don't want to be hy hyperbolic here, but we, we do provide a lot of assessment for our students. Um, and the reason that we do that is because we are, um, uh, you know, held accountable to the standards of learning assessments each year, and there's a window for that. We provide international baccalaureate program testing. We offer uh, AP or advanced placement testing. We do um, STAR testing. We do WIDA testing that has a window. We do DRA testing. Uh, we do a lot of different testing of students throughout the year, and some of those tests that we provide to students have defined windows of opportunity that are given to us that we don't have a choice on. So for example, we have the PSAT day coming up. That's a national PSAT day. It's dictated to us, and, and that's when we do it. Um, we also pay attention to when holiday breaks come in. Um, we do know that there are a number of different religious holidays uh, throughout the calendar, and we try to be thoughtful and cognizant of all of those different holidays, um, particularly um, in the fall and in winter break and then uh, in the spring as well. And those tend to be, in many cases, drivers um, that impact how our calendar is put together. We also, also look at the athletic calendar. Um, we have gone back to the Virginia High School League. We've identified what the windows of time is uh, or are for all of our athletic competitions beginning in the fall and then winter and spring sports and when those windows end. Uh, and those matter to us when we develop a calendar. Um, we also look at um, when school can actually start by state requirement, and we'll talk about that in just a second as I review the legislation very quickly. Uh, we take into account the school board's guidance. Um, we know that you like to try to end by June 15th um, at the latest, and we, we do try to pay attention to that. And then lastly, looking at professional development and professional days that our teachers participate in. So values um, are, are hard to quantify sometimes, um, but these are fairly high uh, level values. Um, uh, and I think th that our calendar reflects in many ways what are the values of the community. Um, does our community um, want to pay attention to uh, pre-Labor Day start or post-Labor Day start? Do they value the time in their summers more than they value time in the winter? Um, where do they like to see a spring break, for example? There are a number of school divisions that are decoupling spring break from, um, most, mostly private schools are decoupling spring break from um, the Easter holiday, which has traditionally been coupled. Um, so some of the things that we hope to glean through this process are what are the values that the community holds? And I think that that will become clear in our community outreach sessions when we ask uh, for them to help us determine what drivers should we also consider as the ad hoc committee um, meets. Um, we also take into account um, teaching and learning. You know, those 180 days are the 180 days that we have with kids. And it's absolutely vital for us to leverage those and utilize those as best we possibly can in a consistent and meaningful way. And one of the things that is hard as a teacher um, is when time is broken up. Um, and it's chopped up in one week, and then you got a couple days off, and you got another week, and then a couple days off. Um, that consistency and sort of flow, um, if you will, is really important. So that, that is a value that our teachers take into account and think is, is also meaningful. Um, but we also believe that students need breaks and teachers need breaks. And so how do we 
um, think about, and that kind of weaves into that third bullet there, taking into account the social and emotional health.